Well, I greet you in the blessed Holy Ghost. Amen. I'm Brother Dwayne, and we welcome you to another exciting episode of the Cry for America. We are brought to you by the Shekinah Family Worship Center. Pastor Fields is our leader. We can be reached on the phone at area code 313-300-6457 or find us on social media under the Cry for America. We're on Facebook, Rumble, YouTube, and the Podbean Podcast. Please subscribe to our channel, leave a like, a thumbs up, a comment, share it across your social media platforms, and help us to let this word of God go forth. We are documenting God's servant here October 14th of 2023 in Detroit, ministering on the four pillars of the inner life, ministering on prayer, amen, prayer, the entails to spiritual authority. Let's go now to Apostle Kwa and his ministry in this word of life. Okay, <clears throat> do you know it is faith that glorifies God? It is faith that honors God because you put in your complete and total trust in Him, yes, believing that what He says is what you're going to live by and it shall be so. <laughs> so that when it is so, God is glorified. Amen. Ain't that something? Ah, you are in saying, Amen. <laughs> Oh, I love you all. Me, I'll tell you I love you. Yeah, love you. That's all. Because me, I know I'm loved by God. <laughs> I don't know about you. <laughs> Ain't that something? Love you, huh? You've gone to church since Moses left Egypt. You don't know God loves you. <laughs> <laughs> Ain't that something? Whoa. Well, brother. I'm, I'm, I'm saying, I know, I don't know. I just, I don't want to take off. If I take off, I'm not going to go to the word. <laughs> I want to do what I said I'm going to do. All right? And I got some more to add to it. Uh, that's why I'm, I'm trying to, Lord, where do you want to start? Ain't that something? Thank you, Lord, for the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord, for the Holy Ghost. I said last night that there was a sentence that I'm going to open up to you, right? Okay, maybe maybe I'll go there and then bring 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 something else. Now here, let me see where where I put it. All right, here. I wanna put my Bible aside, but I'm gonna tell you something that it is in the Word. I'm gonna bring everything you know from the Word, but there's something here that I'm gonna. Let me, let me read that, that, that sentence to you, okay? That sentence that I said, I'm going to open it up to you and see how, how it applies, all right, to your life, all right? Now, give me this. I asked, I asked my scribe, my scribe to check something in the dictionary for me, and because a word, I know it, I know I understand it, but how it is used here, I have never seen it. In all my language learning, okay, in all my Latin and Greek and this, I've never seen this expression, how it is used. So I said, my scribe, check it for me and send me the, the, the dictionary. Because where I was, I couldn't get hold of my dictionary, my huge dictionary. So she checked it, all right, she checked it for me. And so here, all right. Okay, let me, let me see. There's one word. Here's the, no. My scribe, where is the other word? Let me see if I, if I can find it. She's having trouble getting on right now. Oh, she has trouble getting on? Oh, then I'm in trouble. <laughs> ah, yes, God. Where did he send it to me? Oh, she sent it to me on my list. All right, I, I have it down, so. I don't, I'm, I'm not going to worry about it. I will, I will give you the meaning. All right, here, here is the sentence. We were reading it from, from the weapon of prayer, okay, by E.M. Bounds. I told you this is the very first book that got my, my heart for God about prayer after I've been born again, okay? 
Yes, a, a book when I, I couldn't read one chapter without leaving it out there and bowing before God and crying, God, I don't know this. I don't know this, Lord. I must know it. Help me. How do I get here? This man seems to be talking some deep stuff about prayer. How, how powerful prayer is. Right? I'm, and I'm just born again. I say, no, I've got to know this. So I will read half, half a page or one page. Brother, I put it out. It was too much for me. Then I cried to God, Lord, do something. I want, I want to experience this realm of prayer. Right? So that's how I did it. And the more I cried to God, the more I cried to God, the more I could now read it, you know, and be, and be peaceful. <laughs> that's about, about almost 40 years now. You didn't say I mean. <laughs> Amen. Oh my goodness. Right here, it is the necessity for praying men. The necessity for praying men. Why it is necessary that we should have praying men, not church goers. Amen. And I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna explain this word here. He says, first he said, the apostles above everything else were praying men and left the impress of their prayer example and teaching upon the early church. But you don't have to look anywhere for, for what he's saying. Look at the impact of the praying spirit of the Apostle Paul. Yes, look at what he released into the being of the church. i never seen anybody pray like Paul prayed. I've never seen anybody wrestle for the soul of the church than this man of God. Read his, you can't read no, no writing of Paul without uh, no, no, seeing some prayer there for the church. And yesterday we said the grace of God, right? The grace of God. Paul says, by grace, I am what I am. All right? Okay? And then he said, the grace was what, that was given to me, okay, was not in vain. All right, I labored more than they all. All the apostles, he say, I, I labored more than more, them all. Yet not I. See, but the grace of God with me. You see, and I, and I, I, I told you, all right, when grace comes into you, I, I ask you, okay, grace given to you, all right, what did the apostle Paul do with the grace? Because I said two major realms that you see in the life of Jesus, in the life of Paul. Of course, later on, we found out all the apostles you know, you know, were walking in it. But the two realms, Jesus came, right? He is the, he is the source of all grace. Amen. And the grace upon his life, all right, to do whatever God asked him to do. Okay, to release the gospel message, the kingdom gospel to the people and also his grace also led him to establish prayer as the source of everything he did you hear that Amen. prayer as the source of everything jesus did okay because he communed with the father yeah. constantly all right and he's requiring the same thing of us Amen. the apostle paul okay two realms that grace was so abundantly poured into his life. First, to declare the gospel message to the Gentiles. Oh, the grace of God upon his soul. To be able to endure everything that was thrown at him. Right? And then also grace, another realm, was his prayer life. Amen. It was by grace, in the abundance of grace in his being, he was able to pour his life in prayer for the church yeah. and you ain't gonna do nothing else without the grace of God and prayer and the truth That's right. Amen. it takes grace to proclaim the word mm -hmm. it takes grace to enter into the realm of prayer mm -hmm. are you hearing me mm -hmm. grace and, and you have the grace don't tell me you ain't got no grace mm -hmm. every child of God has the spirit of grace who is the spirit of grace the Holy Ghost Okay, in the book of, in the book of uh, uh, Hebrew, I guess ch chapter 12, you know, it refers to the spirit of uh, 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 God as the spirit of grace. 
All right, the spirit of grace. So you're going to get no, no, no grace without the spirit of God. And if you are baptized in the Holy Ghost, great grace abundant. All right, in your, in your being. But grace has a job to do. Grace has been given to you for two things. So that you can live the life and bear testimony to Jesus Christ. And then so that you can enter into the realm of communion with Jesus in prayer. Grace allows a man to pray. Grace, ah, yeah. oh, my Lord. All right, let me, I don't want to take off. It says here, the apostles, above everything else, were praying men. And left the impress of their prayer example and teaching upon the early church. But the apostles are dead now. And times and men have changed. Now we are alive here. If, they, if somebody wants to see what the Apostle Paul, you know, you know, preached and taught, they must have the Holy Ghost and live the way he lived with Jesus. That's why it's hard to reproduce the life of them apostles. But don't you have Holy Ghost? All right, here's God, here's God. Uh, uh, Joshua, uh, my servant Moses is dead. Now you arise. <laughs> David, the Moses is dead, but you are right. Mm -hmm. You are the one that's going to lead these people. Yeah. Okay? If Moses is dead, it, it doesn't mean that Moses' God is dead too. <laughs> Moses' God ain't dead. I'm here. I'm the same God that led Moses that is going to lead you, Joshua. That's right. So how come Apostle Paul is not here, but the Holy Ghost is here, and many people are not walking like the Apostle did? What's the problem? Uh, what's the problem? We got Holy Ghost. They had Holy Ghost. And they were able to walk close. The Lord told us, he said, the Apostle Paul was the one who walked the closest to him. I thought it was John. I thought it was Peter. I said, no. The Lord said, no, it was Paul. He said, don't you see the revelations are poured to, through his being? <laughs> who? Don't you see the man was thanking me? Oh, oh Lord, I said, I said. <laughs> How are you going to thank somebody called God, not for all the things he done for you, but for one thing that he, that he gave you, the one thing that was so precious to you, that opened your whole being to everything God had to pour into your being for the church. The one realm, I thank my God, I talk them tongues. More than he all. <laughs> he is thanking God for tongues. When the last time you thank God for the tongue? Gagaramunda My Lord is alive. When the last time you thank God for tongues? You see, because you don't know the value of it. When you know the value of tongues, you do like Paul did. Namsukuru mungu kwamba mimi nasema kwa lugha ngeni koliko nyenye nyote. I said it in, what, what, in Swahili too. I thank my God. I, thank, I, I talk them tongues more than you all. The Lord said, why did he thank me for that? Because I opened to him, to his understanding, the channel of revelation. That's tongues, praying in the spirit. Praying in the spirit. We ain't even going there. This one I'm talking about talking with your, with your understanding. Praying with, that's what we are dealing with here. Amen. All right? But praying in tongues is the, is the last, the last stuff that we'll, we'll, we'll cover. But this one we're dealing with praying with your understanding. Paul says, I will pray in the spirit and I will pray with my understanding. That's right. right? So some people don't know how to talk in their mother tongue to God. Your mother tongue is English, right? But you don't have to talk to God in English. You don't know. Because you have not allowed the word to dwell in your heart. You ain't going to be able to pray like you ought to until the word of God is alive in your being. The word creates the power for prayer. The word, okay, releases the life of God. Is the word not the life of God? 
The word of God in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him and without him ain't nothing that was made that was made. In him was what? Life. That's it. The word of God produces life in your being. And in the power of that life, you stand before God. You pour your being before God in prayer. <laughs> in the power of that life released from the word, that's why you, can't, you cannot have a powerful prayer life without the word. Okay, the first pillar is the word. The second pillar is praying with your understanding. Absorbing the word and then standing and, and being able to formulate the, the depths of your being, the thoughts of God before you to present your prayer request to God. Rooted in the word of God. In the promises of God. How many believers know how to use the, the promise and stand on the promise and, and present it before God? And claim the manifestation of the promise of God in your life. Woo! <laughs> boy, boy, boy. Now let's go on. So the way I'm going. Lord, Lord, have mercy upon me. So that I'll slow down. Because I'm happy. I'm living by faith. I feel no alarm. <laughs> I feel no alarm, brother. I'm happy in my being. I'm joyful in my being. The Lord lives. The Lord lives. Live within my being. We serve a living God, brother. My calling is to make God alive. <laughs> That's a call like that. Make God alive. Let God come living in your being. <laughs> boy, oh boy, I don't know where I came from. <laughs> he said, but the apostles are dead, and times and men have changed. They have no successes by official entail or airship. They don't have. And the times have no commission to make other apostles. Then he said here, how then do you make apostles? How do you reproduce them? Okay, because, because you know, they, they are dead and gone. But one thing you remember, the spirit that made them who they are is the same spirit living inside us, bro. Amen. <laughs> so how then are we going to have the, the apostolic and spiritual authority that was releasing the apostles. How are they going to be releasing us? How are we going to walk in the realm they walk? The, part, the, the John not say, He that saith, I know him, ought, him, ought himself so to go to church, even as uh, he went to church. <laughs> so how are you going to walk? But thank God, the only one that can enable you to walk that walk is inside you. They call him the Holy Ghost. Amen. And you got the Holy Ghost, but your Holy Ghost ain't working. Pastor, Pastor, uh, uh, can you pray for me? Why? Uh, the devil came to my house, and I don't like what he was doing. So what's the Pastor? Uh, now, what happened to your Holy Ghost? Pastor, my Holy Ghost don't work. Your Holy Ghost don't work. <laughs> Many believers, Holy Ghost don't work. He don't lead them into victory. He don't control their lives. <laughs> you want to have victory, right? But who is the victor? The victor is not you. The victor is the Holy Ghost. He's the one that grants victory in our life struggles. But the Holy Ghost has been rejected. The Holy Ghost dwells inside you, but you bound his hands. You gagged him. Put some gag wire up on the Holy Ghost's mouth. <laughs> How many believers have gang, gagged the Holy Ghost's mouth? You can't talk. Holy Ghost, I'm, I'm, glad, I'm glad you came down here. Or about, you know, don't tell me what to do. <laughs> Holy Ghost, no, 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 it's all right. It's all right. I, know, I, know, I know what to do, so don't, don't, I, 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 it's all right. It's all right. Just, just, just stay there. Don't talk. That's what we've done to the Holy Ghost. Oh my goodness. We don't allow him, right, to, to manifest himself in our life. Right? So I say, 
how then do we uh, reproduce the life of the apostles if they had died and gone? And I'm, I'm telling you that the one who was able to make them who they are, that one still lives inside there called the Holy Ghost. Amen. You got the Holy Ghost, the same Holy Ghost the apostles you know, walked in. Mm -hmm. How come they were able to walk so close with Jesus and you got Holy Ghost and you don't even walk close to the devil? <laughs> you know, <laughs> ain't that something? So what are you talking about? It's, it may be funny, but it's, it, it blows my mind. How come you got Holy Ghost? I got Holy Ghost. You got Holy Ghost, and your Holy Ghost don't make you closer to God. Huh? I said, the way to, to, to let the, 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 the life of the apostle be reproduced in you is what we're talking about. Amen. This, this word here that I'm going to read to you. Prayer. This is a sentence I said last night. Rather, I'm going to read it and then bring a whole message in this, in this little booklet. Because I, 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 I wrote it out of Holy Ghost opening my heart to just say, wow, I've never seen this. So prayer is the entail. The entail. E-N. Okay. E-N-T-A-I-L. Entail. Okay? But, but uh, this one, yeah, because it's in use as a noun. The verb entail, something entails this, something includes this, 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 this. So the, the, the word is, uh, this, uh, this, this uh, topic, it entails, in other words, it covers this and that and that. It entails this. It, uh, so when you open it up, you see that it covers here, it covers there. Covers. All right. So it, it's going to tell you what prayer is to apostolic authority and spiritual authority. Prayer. So he said, prayer is the entail to spiritual and apostolical leadership. Okay? And I'm going to open up what it means. The prayer is the entail. Because I was so, wow, God, this is, this is cool. So I wrote down what, what the Holy Ghost was opening up to me. I asked, I asked my scribe, I said, check, check, okay, check the word entail. Okay, what does it mean? Okay, it's, it's used as a noun. Normally, I know it as a verb. Okay, but this one is being used as a noun. A noun or, or some, so it has, it has a, an idiomatic meaning. Okay, it's something, you know, deeper than the verb, you know, that we know. This is being used in an expression to convey something. So, so I said, entail, the word entail as a verb, okay, involve as a necessary result that's the meaning okay as a verb used as a noun for example okay what i just said until used as a verb means to it it involves you know you know involve as necessary result something is included in in, in, in something you know it covers because that thing that it, it includes is very necessary that's why it is included in it or they could have left it out, but I said, no, this is necessary. It, it makes what we are treating, the subject, it makes it really come out. Yeah. So it involves, it, it, it includes this, this aspect to make the whole thing complete. So when something entails something, all right, that's how, the, that's how it is. Something that, <clears throat> that includes or, or added to, to the topic makes it the, the topic meaningful. Or brings out all that there is to know in the topic you are treating. All right? So say here. But use as a noun. For example, prayer is the entail to the spiritual and apostolic leadership. Here it is a noun. Prayer is the entail to. Is the entail. It's not being used as a verb. It's used as a noun. All right? So it say here. Prayer is the entail to spiritual and apostolic leadership. What's the meaning? Right now, they're meaning here. To say that prayer is the entail to spiritual and apostolic leadership means, notice, means, get it. I say to say prayer is the entail to spiritual and apostolic leadership or authority or everything that involves spiritual authority, spiritual leadership, and then apostolic you know, leadership. Right? Okay. 
It means prayer is the great, inclusive, and necessary part to spiritual and apostolical leadership. That's it. You cannot have spiritual and apostolical leadership without developing prayer. If you do without prayer, your leadership is empty. Okay, and if you leave out prayer, your whole life is empty. Nothing happens to you. Are you hearing me now? Say so here, let me say, to say that prayer is the entail to spiritual and apostolical leadership means prayer is the great inclusive and necessary part to spiritual and apostolical leadership. There are other things in it, but it's the necessary part. The most important part to make your leadership as an apostle so meaningful and so full, right? Is prayer. In other words, you cannot become an apostle. I tell you, in this end time, we have so many apostles. So many apostles who don't know a hoot about the inner working of the Holy Spirit in the being of an apostle. They know nothing. Just, just talk. Listen, apostolic authority has a life behind it. Spiritual authority has a life behind it. And that life is rooted deep into the heart of God in prayer. Prayer opens your being for the backup of heaven. Apostles were backed, backed by heaven. Heaven stood behind the apostles. Because their being was rooted in communion. In communion with God. If he abide in me, did the apostles not abide in him? How can you walk like him except you abide in him? Except you surrender to him? Except he controls your inner life? Every apostolic in a, in a, in a ministry that is owned by God has prayer as its roots. Prayer, the root goes deep into Christ. You went, you went, you went some, they said, what did you go and see on the, in the field? A reed? <laughs> what did you go and see in, uh, in, the, in, the, in the field when you went there? Or oh, a reed? So no, 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 no. This is the one that said he's coming to prepare my way. In some, some easy pushover. An apostle is not an easy pushover because heaven controls him. <laughs> I say heaven controls an apostle. We're going to see. It says here, uh, I said prayer is the entail to spiritual and apostolical leadership. To say that means prayer is the great, inclusive, and necessary part to the spiritual and apostolic leadership. In other words, prayer in its very nature is the great inclusive and necessary part to spiritual and apostolical leadership. In its very nature, it's something you cannot do without. Prayer by its nature, because prayer connects you to heaven. Yes. That's the only channel heaven speaks to you. Through your fellowship with him. So if you don't have heaven pouring revelations to your being, you call yourself an apostle? Oh no. You can be apostle of a denomination, but not of God. And there are so many apostles and they, oh my Lord, have mercy upon us. What happened? That we've watered down the gospel mandates. We've watered down that eternal life. That was the source of everything the apostles did. Ah. Eternal life, everlasting life, indestructible life, imperishable life. What does that do to your inner being? Ah, Jesus. It says here. It means, in other words, prayer in its very nature 
is the great inclusive and necessary part to spiritual and apostolical leadership. Another, another, in other words, more than in other words, prayer in its very nature is the great sine qua non. Remember, remember sine qua non? That which, uh, that, okay, without which nothing happens. Sine qua non, Latin expression. We learned it last, well, last week. Yeah. So prayer is the sine qua non. Okay? Sine without which not. That's the Latin. That's the literal translation. Without sine, without qua. What, without it, without which non, nothing happens. So sine qua non means something that is necessary, absolutely necessary. So when we say prayer, okay, in other words, prayer in its very nature is the great sine qua non of all spiritual and apostolical leadership in the church of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Are you hearing me? In all in all, uh, 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 apostolic and spiritual leadership in the church, prayer is the great element without which you are not an apostle. I'm going to tell you what the Lord showed me. Okay? So you say here, so now here, listen to what we say. Prayer in its very nature is the great sine qua non that without which nothing can be done. That without which or that which you, you should not, you cannot afford to live out. Okay? Now, the, the, the word of God is that without him was not anything made that was made. So how, how can you leave, leave the word out and get anything done? In him was life, okay? And the life was the light of men. And the light shined in the darkness. And the darkness could not put it out. Amen. And you're going to leave this power out and go and try to put out some darkness? <laughs> how do you cast out devils? How do you nullify the, the, the darkness of the enemy in a church? How do you deal with darkness infiltrating the church? The, the hearts and mind of God's people. And you ain't got this great sine qua non. You are not a man that is. I'm, I'm, I'm going to, be, be, before I go with this. Okay, let me, let me go on this. I said, as a result of the meaning of what I have led out. You understand that? When I said here, prayer to, okay, to say that to God, uh, what the, what's his name? Uh, but, uh, he, uh, uh, well, well, what? Ian Bound said, let me read it again to you. Prayer is as page 45 in the, in, the, in the chapter entitled Necessity for Praying Men. Okay? Okay? In my book, it's page, page, page 45, but you can find it. Okay? He said, prayer is the entail to spiritual and apostolical leadership. Then he goes on to say, unfortunately, the times are not prayerful times. You see that? The time, the prayer being a necessary, something that without which you cannot really have spiritual authority, you can't. Look at John G. Lake. Look at the authority. This one. Look at Smith Wigglesworth. Look at those that God backed in their work with God. Who are they? The word and prayer. The four pillars was working deep in the life of Smith Wigglesworth, in the life of Kenneth Hagin, you know, senior, not junior, in the life of Ora Roberts, in the life of uh, uh, T.L. Uh, Osborne. These men, brother, they prayed. They prayed. They prayed into the heart of Christ. And Christ honored them. <laughs> so when you say prayer is the entail, to spiritual and apostolical leadership, okay? Then I said, this is what it means. In other words, let me see, to, it said, to say that prayer is the entity to spiritual and apostolical leadership, to say that means prayer. So I said, to say that prayer is the entity to spiritual and apostolical leadership means prayer is the great, inclusive, and necessary part to spiritual and apostolical leadership. The great and necessary, inclusive, okay, part. Okay, that's that. 
prayer. In other words, prayer in its very nature is the great inclusive and necessary part to spiritual and apostolical leadership. In other words, prayer in its very nature, in the way it is, what prayer is and what it is, in its very nature, prayer is the great sine qua non. That without which not. <laughs> that without which nothing happens. Without prayer, nothing happens. You are a man of God, and all you, all you rely on is your mind, your, your cemetery, the degree that you had, so a seminary degree, and your Bible school degree. That, that's, what, that's what makes you a minister of God. Quite time, time, Sanya, what great madness is that? Are you hearing me? Say here. In other words, prayer in its very nature is the great sine qua non of all, listen, of all spiritual and apostolical leadership in the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. The moment I, I, I wrote that, then the Lord opened my heart. So now, you see this? You see what you've got written? How important prayer is. How you cannot you know, rise into spiritual authority when you are not rooted in me in communion. How you cannot, you cannot exercise my dominion up and power in my house when you are not communing with me. When you ain't talking to me. When you are not allowing me to talk to you and show you things and deal with your life. Okay? Then he said, now write this. Consequently, as a result of what we have said, notice, as a result, consequently, because prayer is the grace in the Quran, without which nothing can happen, in your life as a spiritual leader, in your life as an apostolic leader, okay, all right, consequently, a prayerless apostle, notice, a prayerless apostle, it's not an apostle the Lord Jesus called. Are you hearing that? Amen. A prayer like, don't tell me you're an apostle. Show me in your life where is that power. Reveal to me where is the source of your power. Reveal, let me know your communion with Jesus Christ. As he, he stayed up all night crying to his father. Have you said, is Christ not our apostle, the apostle of our faith? That's right. Amen. And he had to do all night. God in the flesh did all night. <laughs> God in the flesh prayed all night long, brother. <laughs> when, God, when Christ became man, the path he chose is the path that he has left behind us as his example prayer right so he said here i'm saying a prayerless apostle is not an apostle the lord jesus christ called number two a prayerless prophet is not a prophet the lord jesus called because by nature my goodness don't you understand by nature a man the prophets of old how are they boogaloo people just 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 what uh, uh, barbecue uh, eating you no know, prophet <laughs> nowadays your prophet all they, they, they do is eat food and eat this and do that prophet and you ain't in, in prayer before God so number two I said a prayerless prophet is not a prophet the Lord Jesus called your denomination may have called you apostle but you ain't they call you a prophet, but God didn't call you a prophet. I say, God didn't make you prophet. Amen. Your denomination, you know, made you. Because the characteristic, the root of that prophetic inner voice is in prayer. It's deep rooted into Christ's being. Now, what does he say? What does he say? Now, uh, what is that? Uh, God calling. Is it God calling or, or God at even time? General 23. What is it? How power, how power comes. Power comes how? The that, and then and the, what you are you doing? That, that, that makes it come insensibly. When the, when the contact 
when you, when when you are vitally in contact with Christ, power insensibly flows through the vessel. He flows. Say, do you say when it is like that? When your connection, John, John fifteen, when you are, you are vitally connected to me and walking in close contact with me, okay, my power is not given to you as a gift. It flows just as the trees, the, the branches and the, and the vine, the, the, the vine has to go and beg uh, 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 the, the branches, uh, vine, uh, uh, we need some sap. Huh? Does, the, does the branch go, go to the, 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 the mother tree to go and ask, hey, I, I need some sap. Uh, well, how come my sap is low and you ain't giving me nothing? No, <laughs> because of how the branches attach yeah. to the tree, inseparable, whatever flows in the, in the tree flows directly into the branches. Amen. Amen. That's why Jesus Christ used that imagery mm. to describe to you how close you should walk with him. You are the branches, I'm the vine. Stay vitally connected to me. You ain't going to have to beg me to give you power. Power will flow from my being into your being. Look at the apostle Paul. Look at Paul. Power, oh, revelations poured into his being. Because he was right there with him. Vitally connected. He's talking to them Holy Ghost. He's <laughs> oh, brother. I don't know. Okay, listen, let, let's go on. A prayerless apostle is not an apostle that the Lord Jesus called. Number two, a prayerless prophet is not a prophet that the Lord Jesus called. Number three, a prayerless evangelist is not an evangelist that the Lord Jesus Christ called. Uh, number four, a prayerless pastor or shepherd is not a, you know, do you understand? A pastor and you don't pray? Ah, uh, ah, uh, Peter, ah, uh, I brought me some sheep. You got some sheep? Yeah. Uh, they need care for. Ah, uh, I don't know the, the seminary that you went, the seminary you went, Peter. I don't know whether they taught you what I'm going to ask you. Ah, uh, ah, uh, you love me? No, what, what has got to do with the sheep? I'm saying, do you love me? I make my condition. You love me? Amen. So, yeah, I love you. Okay, take care of my sheep. Notice what he's saying. You love me? Take care. You love me? <laughs> Feed them. You love me? What are you talking about? Are you in touch with me where I've allowed, allowed you to taste my love? Have you stayed vitally connected to me so that my love is passing through you? It is my love that will make you a pastor. It is my love that you, Peter, that will help you take care of my sheep. You love me? How many ministers can truly say they love God and God really bears witness that, yes, I know you love me. Now, what, what are you saying? If you love me, do what? Do church for me? No, no. Keep my commandment. Amen. That was what the Lord was, was asking Peter indirectly. Yeah. You love me? Oh, now you are going to have to keep my word mm -hmm. so you can take care of my sheep. A pastor don't, who don't walk in the word of God himself, how can he know if his, his, his children are going astray? How can he see the various lifestyles in the house? Because he don't know what the word of God in his own life is producing. You must first taste of the word in your being as a man of God. Then you can prescribe it to others. If I don't, if I, why, why, why? Why am I crazy about talk talk them tongues? God, that is why, brother, that is why gave me everything I am is the Holy Ghost, brother. I ain't got nothing. I ain't got nothing. All I got is Jesus. And the Holy Ghost he gave me. He gave me Holy Ghost. And I'm blessing the Holy Ghost all the time. That's all I know. I've got great burdens, but y'all don't I don't tell you what, what I walk under. <laughs> but 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 what is it? I fear no alarm. That was uh, my joy is overflowing. I fear no alarm. Because it is not I. Oh my Lord. Ah, not I. Not I. What's what what what's the song? Yet not I. But Christ. Yeah, but Christ, the Christ in me. 
<laughs> All right, let's go. It says here, it says, a pastor, a prayerless pastor, shepherd is not a pastor, shepherd that the Lord Jesus called. The Lord didn't call you. The Lord didn't. But do you know, the, the Lord told us, uh, many are in the ministry that I didn't call. Because no, listen, listen to this. Those of you who, who want to be used by God, he says, nobody becomes my servant, all right, who has not passed through my hands. I say, the Lord said, nobody, nobody, okay, all right, that calls himself my servant, or I call my servant, all right, all right. He cannot be called my servant if he doesn't pass through my hands, if I don't put my hands on him and mold him. If you don't come and sit down at my feet and let me teach him. Because the, the work is mine. You see, people don't, oh my goodness. The ministry, pastor, oh evangelist, oh prophet, oh. The ministry is not yours. The ministry don't belong to you. What I do is not me. I, I, I don't know nothing. But what he pours into my being, that's what I give out. So who is, who, who is doing the work? You know the Lord himself? Jesus, yes. That's it, because I ain't got nothing. Amen. All I do is they say, stay up in the night, read my word, and bless Holy Ghost. Yeah. I, got to, I got to obey that. That's all I do. Oh, Zagaram, Zagaram, Mangros, Zagaram, 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 Ah, yes, God. <laughs> uh, I love my tongues. It, it makes me happy. When I talk, I get happy. <laughs> <laughs> Woo, yes God so it's here a pastor a, a pastor shepherd a prayerless pastor shepherd right it's a, it's a pastor shepherd that the Lord Jesus did not call and then number five a prayerless teacher is, is not a teacher the Lord Jesus called prayerless so how will he call a prayerless man to come and represent him? Ask yourself, how in the world is the Lord Jesus going to designate you as his representative? And you are prayerless. How do you get along with him? How do you get a, know, know his mind? How? How do you get the mind of Christ? You know, in communion with him? Okay? Okay, we emphasize. So what I've just said is the fivefold ministry. They, they must be rooted all right, in prayer. Mm -hmm. I don't care what they say. Because God didn't call you. God called you. You'll be seeking him. You'll be, you'll be after him. Uh, yes, God. In, in addition, all ministers and ministries of our Lord Jesus Christ, all elders, all deacons and deaconesses, all officers in all positions of authority in the church, all those who operate in the nine spiritual gifts of the Holy Ghost, all those who seek to bear the fruit of the Holy Ghost, all singers, all drummers, okay, and, and guitar players, whoo, as well as all choir members and all directors of or ministers of music, all financial officers in the house of the Lord, all the saints of the Lord Jesus Christ, who know fully well that Christ has made us kings and priests unto God and his Father, Revelation 1, 5, 6. Yes, indeed, the whole body of Christ must all, must all, this is what the Lord told me, showed me, must all be first and foremost, men and women of prayer. There is apostolic leadership that is rising. The Lord going to have ministers like Paul and Peter and John and James. They are all coming. The Lord going to raise them back. Because they ain't going to joke. They, don't, they, they are not there for ministry. I, I don't live by ministry. I don't care. What I care is Jesus. That I'll be faithful to Jesus. That I stay close to Jesus. That's all, that's all I need. The rest, Jesus takes care of it. The output of the ministry comes from Jesus. 
what I'm supposed to go and preach comes from Jesus. Are you hearing me? I must commune. Ah, yes, God. <laughs> he said, yes, indeed. The whole body of Christ must all be first and foremost men and women of prayer whose inner lives are rooted deeply in prayer and in God's love through their knowledge of the word of God, they are deep communion with Christ in prayer and in fasting and in the Holy Ghost. That's it. This is what the Lord said. This is what he expects. All, the whole body must be rooted in prayer. That's it. So prayer, prayer is a vital, a vital necessity in the house of God. We appoint leaders who don't even know, know how to cast out flies. Look at Stephen. Look at, you know, you know or the, 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 the six the deacons that were selected. What? Philip. Look at Philip. And all the, the, all the six that were, uh, look at, he said, uh, uh, search for seven men. In a full of the Holy Ghost. <laughs> full of the Holy Ghost means they're going to have grace. Full of the Holy Ghost and of good report. Character. I'm going to deal with character tonight. But let's look. So, so I, I brought this to you. Okay. Now, let me tell you something. So because I said, I've said it. J John 15. Now listen to this. John 15. Because it's prayer. John 15 is about prayer and the word. And the life you're supposed to live. Because it's the life of a branch you have been called to live. The life, it is the life of a branch believers are supposed to express. And the life don't come from them. The life comes from the tree, from the mother tree. The life comes from Jesus Christ. Amen. And you're, you're being vitally connected to him in fellowship, in prayer, deeply seeking him. is what allows the sap of eternal life that springs from the inner life of Jesus Christ into your being. It is your com communion with him. It is your seeking him. You're constantly you know, you know, absorbing the word of God and abiding in him and walking in him. In him we live and move and have our being. Amen. Right? But listen to something. Because I don't think that you all have thought about it. Jesus said, it's not, listen to this, it is not, uh, uh, I will abide in you and then you will abide in me. It's not that. We don't reverse it. Abide in me first. Abide in me first. It's not the other way around. You must, you must make sure you abide in me. And then I will abide in you. You abide in me and I will abide in you. This is a two-way something here that people have not seen. All right? When you, when you abide in Christ, what does that mean? You live in his being, right? Mm -hmm. You are living in his being, all right? And you are, you are, when you live in Christ, what, 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 do, you, do you know what, what you have? You have prosagoge. Mm -hmm. You have access. You live in Christ and there's no access into his being? Mm -hmm. Then what are you doing in his being? Mm -hmm. He gave you access into this grace wherein we stand, Romans chapter 5. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God. <laughs> by whom we have this reconciliation, this, uh, uh, this peace. And, uh, and, uh, what? and by whom we have access into, into something. Access is an open door granted to you to enter into something. You abide in Christ and you ain't going to know access into the riches of Christ. Why? You ain't seeking him. You ain't sick of him. So that's the first one. One way is you seeking Christ. In Christ seeking what is inside him. Okay? And then he abides in you. What he's looking for is different from what you are looking for from him. Okay? You are looking for some riches from his being to be poured into your being. But when he abides in you, you know what he's looking for? He's looking for you yielding yourself to him. 
That's it. You've never seen that. You've not been told that. The Lord opened and said, listen, it's a two-way. You abide in me, I give you access. When you seek me, I open my being to you. Then you get some stuff. You get some stuff. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> you are being nourished by your abiding in me. By your, your seeking me, I'm nourishing you. I'm nourishing you. And then me too, I abide in you. I abide in you. I want you to yield your will to me. I want you to, to, to surrender to me. So I, I, I kill off that old life. <laughs> ah, you see, you see, it is not our job. Christ crucified were, were the old man on the cross. Now he lives inside you. He's going to make sure that you no longer live by the old man. Yeah. He makes sure. He says, I will abide in you. And when I abide in you, I need you to surrender to me. Now, I'm giving you access into me. The, the other side, access. You have access. Drink some, some Holy Ghost. Drink some love. Drink some juice. <laughs> drink, drink some love juice <laughs> from my being to your being. All right? drink, drink as much as you want. How much love can you take? How much peace can you take? You live inside me, and you ain't got no peace. You live inside me, you ain't got no love. You live inside me, you ain't got no joy. What, what are you doing here? Amen. You're just going to church. Oh, yeah, 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 church. You go on, go on, go on, go on until you are churchified. You dry bones. How many church folk are dry bones? Come on now, you're supposed to be living in Christ. You ain't living in nothing. You live in him, something must happen to you. Because you live in him, you'll be sick in him. Communion. All right? And then he lives in you. He will be wanting you to yield to him. How much, let me ask you. Let me ask you this question. How much, since you've been living in Christ, how much of Jesus Christ have you been able to, to draw into your being? Since you abide in him, how much of Christ's life has been part of yours? And then, since he also lives inside you, how much of your life have you yielded to him? Are you hearing me? You see, if you want prayer, yield to Christ. If you want, if you want prayer, look for Christ. <laughs> uh, one way you are taking him in the other way you are yielding to him that's how it is that's why he said dwell in me and I will dwell in you for without me you can do nothing if ye abide in me and my words abide in you then you will ask oh my goodness you will ask prayer 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 comes when you dwell in me communion in me and you are presenting your request my good Zambanga. Oh, my Lord. All right? Okay. So, brethren, I have, I have explained this to you, okay? Did you, did you get it? Mm -hmm. All right? So, now, let's go on to tonight. I have an hour, an hour or so to, to, to bring you another area of prayer. All right? Okay, go with me to James chapter 5. The book of James. Go in there for me. Ah, James chapter 5. And I know you know this word, but I know, I know at the same time you don't know this word. Ah, yes, God. Amina, no, to, tonight I ain't getting no Amina at all. What, 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 what happened to the Amina people? Oh, brothers, <laughs> you all make me sad. I ain't no Amina from you. <laughs> Amina, come on, let's rejoice. Amina. Yes, God. <laughs> yes, God. Yes, God. Now listen. He says here. All right. Uh, James chapter 5, verse 16. Confess to one another, therefore, your faults, your slips, your false steps, your offenses, your sins, and pray also one for another, that you may be healed and restored to spiritual tone of mind and heart. All right, then he said this. The earnest, <laughs> the earnest, now the, the, the King James, is, that's what we know, the King James. He says here, the effectual, or oh, Zagaz, fervent prayer of a who? I say, of a who? 
church goer. No church goer can have this fervent, effectual. No, it's, it, it's not something that no, no church goer should not develop. If there's those who walk close to him, that, will, that can express effectual, fervent prayer. If you are yo yo in your life, you will never have effectual fervency. Ah, life, zeal. Filling your being, you pouring your heart. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Say here, the effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. In the in the amplifier, it says here. The you say here, what is it? Okay, the earnest, heartfelt, continued prayer of a righteous man makes tremendous power available, dynamic in its working. My Lord. Ooh, yes, God. But brother, the whole point is this. He says, the righteous, the righteous are, are the ones who offer this prayer. But who are the righteous? You're going to say, it is, it is you, it is this, the, the sins are this. But what, what did we study? What, 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 what was brought to us when the law, okay, the Gentiles and the Jews failed to honor God, to obey the law. Gentiles have no law. They, they do whatever they want. Jews had the law. They couldn't obey it. So all men sinned. And then, 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 then Romans, you know, you know, three twenty one comes in the most amazing thing. Now he says, he said, therefore, say now, the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus is now revealed among God. The righteousness, all right, is now revealed, all right, by which is by faith in Jesus Christ, not by law. Not by anything, but by faith. A new righteousness that belongs to God and it is in his son Jesus Christ. Okay, let me read that to you and explain this, this thing to you. Because we talked about, we talked about uh, justification, didn't we? But because he who is declared just is the one who is righteous. In other words, he who is justified is the one who is made righteous. When you are justified, you are treated as if you never sinned. And then you are given a, a what? An access, a standing in the very presence of God. That is the righteous man. A man who knows he has a standing before God. Amen. You see, you, you just a church, 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 church until you are churchified, so you don't know where you stand. Brother, righteousness given to us brings us before the very presence of God. Uncondemned. Because grace is given to us. And faith, by faith we receive this righteousness. By faith in Jesus Christ. All right? So right standing. So he said the effectual fervent prayer of the one who knows he has the right standing with God. <laughs> Oh, you're doing, you're doing happy. It says, the effectual fervent prayer of, of a righteous man, all right? And I'm saying, righteous man is the one who has been justified by faith in Jesus Christ and declared just by God. The just shall live by faith. He who by faith is declared just or righteous shall live, but shall live by his faith. So that righteous is the just that God made righteous. Not man, God declared, because of your faith in my son, I say you are righteous. I declare you righteous. I give you a standing in my presence. That the very first standing a sinner, a sinner man who has repented is given. The very first standing, the presence of God. Woo! Wow, I was a sinner. I was a sinner, big sinner, atheist man. But God, have mercy upon me. I believe on Jesus Christ. And God said, okay, it's over, bro. Come and stand in my presence. I bring you before my presence. All your wickedness is cleansed. Whoa! So, listen to me. 
Righteousness is a standing, a gift of God to his, those who believe in Jesus Christ. It's a gift. You are given a standing. You didn't earn it. God said you are righteous because you believe on my son. Okay. But righteousness also. Now, Abraham. Abraham right, was declared in a, uh, righteous, right? Amen. He was declared righteous. Amen. And then God told him, Abraham. All right. Okay. I'm all God almighty. All right. Walk before me. The righteous man. Supposed to walk before God and be perfect. You hear me now? So righteousness, from af after it has been given to you as a, as a standing, as a gift, and as you walk with Christ, as you walk daily with him, the righteous character of the righteous standing is wrought in your being. The character that comes, that describes a righteous man, first it was given to you as a position. But as you walk with Jesus, the position becomes something that is wrought in your character. You don't say, because I'm walking in the presence of God, I can go and commit adultery. You cannot. Because as you walk with Christ, the character of Christ of righteousness is produced inside you. Therefore, you cannot go and commit sin. You can't go and do the stuff that you used to do. Because you were a sinner, you were forgiven when you believe on Jesus. You were brought in. You didn't do nothing. You were brought in to stand before God. Now, as you daily walk with uh, uh, God in Christ Jesus, the Holy Spirit starts working in your character. In your character. Reproducing the position that was given to you. Reproducing it in your being so that you are, you are righteous by character. Not just righteous by standing. Understand that. Because it is the righteous by character. Okay, this, this righteous man, all right, who, 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 who presents effectual fervent prayer, all right, it's not a, 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 a righteous man who, just by standing. This guy, now look at the example he uses. What? Elijah. Come on, you tell me that man was some, some, some pushover. You, you tell me that man was, was not, not righteous, just a standing. Oh no, look at his character. Amen. Will God, will God just, 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 what, 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 what would you do? Just, just translate Elijah? Because he's just, all right. Oh no, that was a, a serious man. That was a righteous prophet. That was a clean, holy man. A holy man in conduct. A holy righteous man in character. It is his life that is being talked about by James. He uses Elijah. He had the same passions as we, uh, as we have as human beings. But what? He prayed that there should be no rain. It didn't rain. And then he prayed. Oh, <laughs> a righteous man has authority to pray. These are the ones that are offering prayer that pleases God. Amen. I know you're going to say amen. Brethren, we are looking for righteous men and women. Prayer is not the, 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 the domain of churchgoers. No, no. Prayer is the domain of those who want to walk with God with the character of righteousness that, that allows God to answer their prayers. When they cry to God, God hears. Yes, Lord. Did he not say that the, the, the prayer of the righteous is his delight? Mm -hmm. Did he not say that in, in the book of Proverbs? The prayer of the, he hates what the evil doers, but the prayer of the righteous man is his delight. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. So this is what the Lord is looking for when he said the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man, mm -hmm. not somebody who just has the standing, okay? In other words, someone who has just been born again, That's right. all right, and come on in. He cannot offer this. He, he ain't got the, in, in, in not being, he, he's not been prepared. Yeah. He's not been sanctified. He's just been justified, mm -hmm. okay? Brought in, standing before God. All right, God loves you. But brother, there is sanctification to take place. Bringing you to holy living. 
Ah, my good. So, brother, the kind of prayer that we are talking about that pleases God is a, is, is a, is a prayer that is backed up by a character. The character of a righteous man must be producing you. That's why you cannot just be going to church and just say, I will pray, pray. Prayer is not just words. Prayer is a life burning in your being that you are listening to God in words. It's a, it's, a, it's a life that flows, a life of the word that, has, that is flowing. The word of God is life. So when you mingle it with faith, oh boy, there's power. There's explosion <laughs> on the inside. And your words have power. What did, what did, what? Uh, what, what is his name? Uh, yeah, Elijah, John the Baptist. What did he say? Those or he that God sends, that's what? speaks the words of God, not about God. He don't speak words about God. He speaks words of God. Words that God poured into his being. That is the kind of prayer that the righteous man prays. Why? Because he's been communing with God. He's been seeking God. He's been walking with him. So his inner being is being purified all the time. His inner life is, is just growing deeper and deeper, brother. Be rooted into the heart of Christ. Get your roots in the being of Christ. Then you can draw the living waters. Living by faith in Jesus yeah. above. Ah, yes, God. Now, brother, now let me go now because of this. I want you to read this. Uh, come here with me. I'm going to read something. Go to Romans. Then I'll read something for you. Go to Romans chapter 8. If you are a righteous man, okay, you are expected to develop righteous in a character, right? You are, you are supposed to live a, a particular kind of life. Remember, we are talking about prayer. And everything that goes in to make prayer what it should be to have the authority and power is what we are dealing with. Because your life must be built Okay, on the pillar of prayer, mm -hmm. with prayer supporting you. Right, Romans chapter 8. All right, Romans chapter 8. I'm going to read that quickly for you. All right, here. Chapter 8 says here. says, For God has done, verse, verse 3, For God has done what the law could not do. Its power being weakened by the flesh. Notice, by the flesh. Its power, the, the, the power what, of the law, being weakened by the flesh. And what is this? The flesh, which means the entire nature of man without the Holy Spirit. Your natural life is flesh. It's earthly. Okay? It's because the earthly life we had don't have no spirit life. In there. So we could not, that's why we could not keep the law. We couldn't obey it. We always stumble. We had no power. God is a spirit. The word of God is spirit. Man is flesh. You, uh, are you hearing? Man is flesh. Man is natural. You ain't, ain't got no spiritual nothing. Man fair lost all spiritual power. Amen. So he's mere man. That's why the devil is having a head, a, a, a head day, you know, in this world. Me a man, that guy is spirit. The devil is spirit. God is a spirit. So it, it, the barriers between two spirits, the spirit of God and the spirit of the devil, to control man. You see that? When God takes over you, God wants to control your life and guide you. When the devil takes over, he wants to control your life and destroy you. Are you hearing me? So he says here, for God has done what the law could not do. Its power being weakened by the flesh. The flesh is the entire nature of man without the Holy Spirit. Sending his own son in the guise of sinful, sinful flesh and as an offering for sin, God condemned sin in the flesh. What did he do? He subdued overcame, deprived the flesh of its, of its power. Its power, okay, now, now yeah, I said, uh, God condemned sin in the flesh, subdued, overcame, deprived it 
of its power over all who accept that sacrifice, who accept the sacrifice of, of Christ, they are delivered from the power of that of, uh, of the of, of evil, from the power of evil having access over their life. The evil can no longer now overcome man because God has destroyed the power of sin in the flesh. The flesh is condemned. No, no, hold on. Then he says here, so that verse 4, the righteous and just requirement of the law might be fully met in us. Condemned, you know, sin in the flesh. So you cannot, you cannot walk in the flesh. So that the righteous requirements of the law might be fulfilled in us now. Who, you see, on, on, in us who live and move not in the ways of the flesh. The righteous requirement of the law will now be fulfilled in those who don't walk in the flesh, in their natural part, but walk in the spirit. Now, now we, we have access to the spirit. So it is the spirit we walk in. No longer the natural life. No longer flesh. Flesh is natural life without God. You see that? So he said, so that, so that the righteous and just requirement of the law might be fully met in us. Who live and move, not in the ways of the flesh, but in the ways of the spirit. In other words, our lives governed not by the standards, oh yes God, the standards and according to the dictates of the flesh, but our lives controlled, controlled by the Holy Spirit. You see that? There are two kinds of life here. Life in the flesh, controlled by the flesh, controlled by the dictates of your own desires. Your will tells you what to do, not God. Okay? And then there's an, another life that's controlled by the Spirit. That makes us do what the Spirit of God wants us to do. Live by the Spirit and not by our, our, our minds and our wills and our own desires. You see that? So there are two lives here. In Romans chapter 8, have two lives that, kinds of life that he's describing. One in the flesh, one in the Spirit. Yes, okay? But I'm coming to show you something. He said here... Uh, Verse 5, for those who are according to the flesh and are controlled by its unholy desires, they set their minds on and pursue those things which gratify the flesh. If you live in the flesh, you are controlled by the flesh, you said your thinking, your thinking is all flesh. You know, think about, about heaven. That's why Paul says, if we then are risen with Christ, set your affections on things above, not on earth. Yes, God. Don't go after the earthly things no more. Mm -hmm. You are living in the spirit, so go get some desires from heaven. Yes, Let heaven drop some stuff in your soul, and uh, you seek it. You pray for it, and you receive it. Don't walk in the flesh no more. Don't listen to your natural in instincts anymore. Listen to the spirit of God. Yes, Right, so he says here, for verse uh, uh, for those who are according to the flesh and are controlled by its unholy desires, set their minds on and pursue those things which gratify the flesh. But those who are according to the spirit and are controlled by the desires of the spirit, they set their minds on and seek those things which gratify the Holy Spirit, which please the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Now the mind of the flesh. Notice, the mind, the mindset of a man who walks in the natural, who don't walk in no Holy Ghost. There are many believers that are supposed to be walking in the Spirit, but they walk in the natural. Okay, they don't want the Holy Ghost to control them, so they don't mind the Holy Ghost. They go back and live their whole life again. And you think with your whole life you make it to heaven? Now, the mind of the flesh, which is sense and reason without the Holy Spirit. You hear that? Sense and reason belong to the natural life. Mm -hmm. Sense and reason. Your reason will lead you as, uh, astray. Your human reasoning will lead you astray all the time. Because the mind of the spirit, ah, yes, God, is the mind of Christ. And the mind of Christ don't lead you astray. Mm -hmm. All right? So he says, now, the mind of the flesh 
which is sense and reason without the Holy Spirit, is death. Death that comprises all the miseries arising from sin, both here and after. But the mind of the Holy Ghost is life and soul peace, both now and forever. Amen. Now, I, talk, I, 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 I show you this. Now, let me read something. Tomorrow, there's another aspect I'll go. But I want to read something to you about the problem we have in prayer. It is with the flesh. The problem we have is with the flesh. And so I want to read something to you, and then we conclude. Ah, yes, God. Here. Ah, kneeling we triumph, book one. It didn't it, it say, say, say standing we triumph. It didn't say singing we triumph. It said kneeling. Amen. Bow your knees before God. Yes. And cry to him, you will triumph. So in this book, kneeling we, we, we triumph, Okay, book one, there's book one and book two. Kneeling with triumph. Now here, listen to this. The flesh, the arch enemy to prayer. The flesh, man's flesh, man's natural life. The flesh is natural life. That's why I read Romans chapter 8 to let you see. The flesh is natural life without God. So natural life without God all right, it's number one enemy to prayer. And you're going to, you're going to, you probably, probably that, you know, you know why you don't pray? You know, you know why you don't want to spend two, three, four, five hours in the presence of you? And the flesh is killing you. Flesh is calling you. Your, your barbecue dinners are always calling you. You ain't saying I'm me now. All right, so let's look at the flesh, who is the arch enemy, the arch enemy to prayer. All right? All right, he's quoting from Romans. The, the, here are the scriptures. They that are in the flesh cannot please God. Romans 8, 8. No flesh should glory in his presence. You hear that? 1 Corinthians chapter 1, uh, verse 29. So let me read what this, these two passages of, of, of scripture can open us up to. A life lived according to the flesh and not according to the spirit. It is in this that we find the origin of the prayerlessness of which we complain. <laughs> the origin of prayerlessness. Natural man, did he pray to God? <laughs> so which man prays to God? All right. The man born again. And not just born again, the man who is seeking God, who wants to walk with God, he's the one that is going to pray in the spirit. Right. He's the one that's going to seek God. So let me read, and then we'll, we'll be gone. A life lived according to the flesh, and not according to the spirit. It is in this that we find the origin of prayerlessness of which we complain. A brother once said to me, that is the whole difficulty. We wish to pray in the spirit and at the same time walk after the flesh. <laughs> you hear that? You want to walk in the spirit and then, and then live, live in the flesh. It ain't going to happen. And this is impossible. Adam was created to have fellowship with God and enjoyed it before the fall. After the fall, however, there came immediately a deep-seated aversion to God. A dislike, strong dislike towards God. You don't want God. A strong feeling of not wanting. Because he, he's no more in the spirit. Did he not enjoy God? You communion with him, walking. The Lord said, I, 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 I took Adam. All right? In the garden, went with him for a walk, and I taught him about the creation. Oh, my Lord. My goodness. Now he's falling. What did he do when he, when he fell? What, what did he first do? He hid himself. He don't want God to see him. He don't want to see God either. So the flesh man ain't going to see God. He don't want God to, you know, you know, you know, to see what you're doing. You're always hiding. After the fall, there came immediately a deep-seated aversion to God, and he fled from him. This incurable aversion 
is the characteristic of the unregenerate nature. A nature that is not born again, that's the first characteristic. You don't want anything to do with God. Ah, yes, God. The, is, is, is the characteristic of the unregenerate nature. And the chief cause of our unwillingness to surrender ourselves to fellowship with God in prayer. That's it. It says, Scripture teaches us that there are but two conditions possible for the Christian. One is a walk according to the Spirit. That's why I, I, I read in the Romans to you. A walk according to the Spirit. The other, a walk according to the flesh. That's it. Make your choice. Paul writes to the Galatians, Are you so foolish? Oh, ye Galatians. Are you so foolish, having begun in the spirit? Are ye now made perfect in the flesh? Galatians chapter 3, verse 3. They are service lay in fleshly outward performances. Oh my goodness. That's all they do. Fleshly outward performances. No spirit performance. No spirit life. Fleshly. He says here, they did not understand that where the flesh is permitted to influence their service of God, ah, it soon results in open sin. Where, you said they didn't understand, okay, that where the flesh is permitted to influence your service to God, it soon results in open sin. There is no means of dealing with the flesh. Save as Christ dealt with it, bearing it to the cross. Our old man is crucified with him. Romans 6, 6. Go and read, go and read the whole of Romans chapter 6. Listen. He who dwells in Romans chapter 6. All right? That's, that's where you're going to dwell. That place is, is dead. You can't. You say you should consider everything dead. You, you should consider yourself dead to sin. If you are not willing to consider yourself dead to sin, you ain't going to have life. But alive to God. Romans 6, go read that. Your members must all be surrendered to God. So it says here, there is no means of dealing with the flesh, save as Christ dealt with it, bearing it to the cross. Our old man is crucified with him, so we by faith also crucified and regard and treat it daily as an accursed thing that finds its rightful place on the accursed cross. Your flesh belongs to the cross. Would that we might understand God's counsels of grace for us. The flesh on the cross, the spirit in the heart, and controlling the life. <laughs> ah, The flesh on the cross, the spirit in the heart, and controlling the life, the spirit has to be in the heart and control your life. Here then, we have the deep root of evil as the cause of a prayerless life. You hear that? A deep root of evil. The flesh is the cause of a prayerless life. The flesh can say prayers well enough. Oh yeah, you, you talk some sweet prayers. <laughs> ah, the flesh can say prayers well enough, calling itself religious for so, for so doing. And that satisfying conscience. But the flesh has no desire or strength for the prayer that strives. Strives after an intimate knowledge of God. Flesh don't know that. Flesh wants to be seen. Flesh wants to say some words. Some religious prayer. Everybody know how oh, yeah, he pray good. But to go deeper and get some life from God, flesh ain't going. Because you go there, you're going to die. <laughs> Ooh. All right, he says here that rejoices. Okay, okay, let me go back. But the flesh has no desire or strength for the prayer that strives after an intimate knowledge of God, the prayer that rejoices in fellowship in, with God, and, and that continues to lay hold of his strength. So, finally, it comes to this the flesh must be denied and crucified. That's it. The Christian who is still carnal, first, first Corinthians chapter, chapter 2, chapter 3, you see carnal, carnal believers walking in the flesh, controlled by the flesh. 
If you're a carnal believer, you don't want prayer. Oh no, you don't love prayer. Hey, yeah, you go to church, you love the parties, the 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 the, 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 the barbecue dinners and the, and the cookouts. You know, you there. But don't let them call up, uh, prayer and fasting. Oh no, oh, no. <laughs> flesh. Oh no, it don't belong to me. The Christian who is still carnal has neither disposition nor strength to follow after God. He rests satisfied with the prayer of habit or custom. But the glory, the blessedness of secret prayer is a hidden thing to him. Flesh don't know that. Till someday his eyes are opened and he begins to see that the flesh in its disposition to turn away from God is the arch enemy which makes powerful prayer impossible for him. I had once at a conference spoken on the subject of prayer and made use of strong expressions about the enmity of the flesh as a cause of prayerlessness. After the address, the minister's wife, ooh, the minister's wife, it's not you, mama, it's not you. <laughs> the minister's wife said that she thought I had spoken too strongly. <laughs> In that, zone, that flesh, that flesh one. That flesh, you complain about a strong you know, words to encourage you to live you know, in, in, in the spirit. So he, he says, uh, uh, she thought I had spoken too strongly. She also had to mourn over too little desire for prayer. She mourned over too little desire. He don't want prayer too much. That's why he's saying, oh, he, he talked, your words are too much. That backslidden woman. <laughs> ah, yes, God. She also had to mourn over too, too little desire for God. I showed her what the word of God said about the flesh. And that everything which prevents the reception of the spirit is nothing else than a secret work of the flesh. Oh, my brethren, do not seek to find in circumstances the explanation of this prayerlessness. It's not in circumstances. Yeah, that's because it's raining, so I didn't want to pray. Yeah, because uh, Christ, did he not pray all night? That's right. So he said, oh, my brethren, do not seek to find in circumstances the explanation of this prayerlessness over which we mourn. You cannot find the cause of it in circumstances. Seek it where God's word declares it to be in the hidden aversion of the heart to a holy God. Because the heart don't want, don't want to come near close to God. That's the cause of prayerlessness. The heart got some stuff that he's holding on to. Ah, yes. he, loves, he loves his onions from Egypt. <laughs> The, the flesh loved the barbecue dinners from Egypt. They were they, they was eating. You know, I don't know what they were eating. There, but when they came to the wilderness, Lord, ah, the Lord, Lord, ah, ah, He gave us manna in the desert. Can He give us meat too? He gave us some some beef. <laughs> they were crying for beef <laughs> in the desert land. Oh, God gave them beef. But look at what happened to them. Did He not judge them? Because it was, it was fleshly desires and not what God wanted for them. Yeah. So, so, so let's find out the reason why people don't like to pray or is the aversion, the hatred, the, the heart secretly possesses toward the things of God. He don't want too much. So they, they find the score is raining. Oh, but pastor, let's do another time. Oh, yes, uh, it's, it's, it's snowing. Hey, well, who was there in Insta? Did we ever meet a snowstorm prayer meeting? You and I. We was gone. We were there all night long. It's snowing. People, people say it's snow, but it's snow. It's not snow. All right, you can stay home and, 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 and sleep. But Pastor Fitz came. By the time he came, I have cleared the snow. <laughs> we was in the praying the Holy Ghost. All right? No aversion could stop us. And nothing is going to stop us now. Now we are the threshold of what God has promised. And God is going to do what he said. We ain't going to allow anything to stop us. No excuses. No excuses. No excuses. So he says here, brethren, do not seek to find in circumstances the explanation of this prayerlessness over which we mourn. Seek it where God's word declares it to be 
in the hidden aversion of the heart to a holy God. Uh, you know who wrote this? Andrew Murray. And we know him. The one who, uh, who wrote humility book, he's, he's the one that wrote this. The flesh, there is the arch enemy of prayer. Okay? The, 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 the flesh, the arch enemy to prayer. So if we are not, not looking for more prayer, the secret, the, the reason for your uh, you know, fighting against prayer, oh, too much prayer, too much prayer. When I was in Arkansas, all right, we had, Pastor Glenn would tell us, we had prayer Monday to Friday. We were blasting church Monday to Friday. We, we was blasting. The only day we didn't go to, you know, prayer was Saturday so that everybody can go do his stuff. But we prayed. I have never, I have never reneged on God's call. To bring prayer to the people. Yes, I have never. My brother really knows. Okay, he brought me to Michigan. <laughs> oh boy, I, I tell you. Brethren, you, I pray. There is something that I can, but I'll read it tomorrow. Don't worry. It's 10 o'clock. I, I can read it now, but I, I, I'll, I'll, I'll be merciful since we are coming tomorrow. Tomorrow morning. All right, so I, I, I thank God that we can. Talk like this to the brethren. We can present God to the brethren in the way that it will be beneficial to you. That you make it clear to you. The reason why you don't like praying, okay, because the righteousness of God has not, you know Elijah has grown. You know, since the they call him unto the, unto the time he fought all the Baal on Mount Carmel, that guy grew. He was in the wilderness talking holy gold, looking for God. You think he was just going to something? He was growing on the inside with authority and boldness. Look at how he prayed. Read that prayer on Mount Carmel. And see, brother, oh my, the confidence of Elijah. The confidence of Elijah. He, 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 he put all the, all the stuff there, all the wood, all the, he poured water on the, on, on the sacrifice. You pour water, and you want fire to come, you pour water. But that he is in the Holy Ghost. He knows what God can do. Oh, boy, you all, you all don't give me some joy at all. You all, I don't see you all joyful. Anybody out there joyful with the word of God? I mean. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I give you praise. I give you glory. I know you will have a people, a people that will be completely sold out. If you don't want God, you cannot come here. I, I tell you all the time, those who are here, those who are online, some, those, or those of you who are just, you know, yo, 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 you know, if you don't intensify your seeking of the Lord to be strengthened by the power of prayer in your innermost being, sooner or later, you cannot stand. Yeah, it just it just bothers me that somewhere down the line some of you are gonna quit because you couldn't find any strength to walk with God when God has strength, so much strength to pour it into your being. Father God, I thank you that Father, none of my brethren, Lord, Father, will fall by the wayside. My prayer is that God, the Holy Spirit, will be called upon to sustain them in the hour of their need. They won't flee from God, but they will flee to God. They will open their being to God in the name of Jesus. Father, God, help us. Father, help us. The end time is upon us. We need prayer. The people must pray and call upon God. They have access into, into the grace of God. Now, oh God, give us the boldness to persevere in prayer and in our fellowship with the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank you for what you have accomplished tonight, opening up the scriptures to your people. In the name of Jesus Christ, be with us in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. Pastor Fields, it's over to you, Pastor Fields. Give the Lord a clap offering. Give the Lord a clap offering. Yes, God. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, God, Pastor Fields, over to you.